So let's recall that, that DNA is a polymer, is one of the macromolecules, and the monomer that makes up DNA is a nucleotide. And so what we have here in this section is showing us the components of a single nucleotide. I just want to review that first. And I've drawn a structure down below. There's a little more simplistic drawing of that nucleotide, but essentially a nucleotide has three components. The one in, shown in yellow, this is the sugar, okay? Or in the case of DNA, it's called a deoxyribose, sugar. It also has a phosphate group, and then it has a base or a nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous just meaning it's containing a nitrogen atom. Now, there are four possible bases for DNA, and there are four possible bases for RNA. The bases for DNA are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. And as you see in this box represented up here, um, this shows you the structure of each of those four bases. So this, com this component right there of a nucleotide is going to be different based on whether it's an adenine nucleotide, a cytosine nucleotide, guanine, or thymine. One other important thing I want to point out about the actual bases has to do with whether they are a single ring or a double ring. So you'll notice that the, the pyrimidines, okay, which includes the cytosine and thymine bases of DNA, uracil is actually a base that's found in RNA. But all three of these are a single ring structure. The purines, on the other hand, basically have a double ring structure. That's adenine and guanine. So we have pyrimidines and purines. And what we know about DNA is that it is a long polymer of these nucleotides bonded together. So, for example, this would be one nucleotide, and then you can add them in a strand, right? So you could have millions or billions of these nucleotides bonded together. We also know that DNA exists as what we call double-stranded, which means two of these long strands are held together. And the way that they're held together is by hydrogen bonding between the actual bases. I'm going to show you a little more about that in a second, but what I want you to see is the bases always pair in a certain way. Adenine is always going to pair with thymine, and notice that's one purine with one pyrimidine. Guanine is always going to pair with cytosine, again, a purine with a pyrimidine. That's the way that you always are going to see the, the base pairing in DNA. Now let's look at um, a little bit more of the structure of DNA. So let's focus here in the middle for a second. And this is showing you exactly what I mentioned. So I first want to point out to you that this in yellow is one nucleotide. We have the phosphate group, we have the, rib the deoxyribose, and we have the base. In this case, the base is thymine. It's a pyrimidine. Okay, the next base is here in blue, guanine, phosphate, sugar, nitrogenous base. Now, let's look, let's, let's understand this a little bit further. These dashed lines that exist here between the thymine and the adenine, those are the hydrogen bonds. And that is holding those two strands of DNA together. We have three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine holding those together. Now, guanine and cytosine actually has a stronger bond than adenine and thymine just because there are three hydrogen bonds versus two. What I want you to see is this would be one strand of DNA. So we only show two bases. But the next base could continue on this direction, right? And we could have another base this direction, or another nucleotide, excuse me. So they could, this would be one long strand of DNA. This is another long strand of DNA. So in other words, what we call the sugar phosphate backbone is just alternating, right? Between sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate of each of the nucleotides. 
Same thing on this strand, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate backbone. What's in the middle are the bases. And what's holding these two strands together is the bonding between the bases. Now, if we drew a very simplistic view of this, it would be like this strand would be one side of the ladder, this strand would be another side of the ladder, and then the rungs of the ladder would be the hydrogen bonding that's happening between the bases. Then you can take that ladder, and if you twisted it in a spiral, then you would end up with the actual three-dimensional structure of DNA. This, in, in this figure on the, on the left side, you'll see that we have the same structure, right, this twisted ladder structure, but the illustration is drawn with colors showing you the different nucleotides or bases of the nucleotides that are existing as the rungs of that ladder. So it lets you see that adenine is pairing with thymine, that's the way it always works, and guanine is pairing with cytosine, and that's what's holding, so the ribbon in this case would be like the side of the ladder. That's the sugar phosphate backbone, the phosphates and the sugars alternating. And this would be the other side of the ladder with the sugars and the phosphates alternating. Now, what I want you to also think about when you're thinking about the structure of DNA is that the way it is represented here is the way it exists typically in the cell, which that is double-stranded. The two strands are held together by the hydrogen bonding of the bases. But in cases when the cell needs to make a copy of the DNA, it has to have a way to unzip this, okay? In other words, open up those hydrogen bonds so that it can make a copy. So when we talk about unzipping or, or opening up the double-stranded DNA, that's what we're talking about, is breaking those hydrogen bonds to, to cause single-stranded portions of the DNA to be opened up. 